to cold weather in Kentucky. I uh, just got back from a test and tune event trying to dial in some 650s. Did pretty decent. Ran a 650 with an 8 and a 653, which is pretty good. It was a short night. Couldn't get too many passes in. Um, but as you can hear, the car sounds like junk starting. It always has, but it's really starting to get on my nerves. Uh, so today I'm going to take a little bit of time and focus on trying to both get the starter straightened out, whatever's going on with that, and also um, get the cold start dialed in at least better. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be better than it is. I'm sick of it. So uh, I've made, I got some new uh, 10.5Ws there for the car, but I refuse to let myself touch them or put them on until I get it running properly. So that will be my reward. Um, we're going to start off by getting the IAC set and make sure that's correct. It needs to be in the neighborhood of 0 to 5% at warm idle. So for this particular car, I just adjust this like an old carburetor. It's the same, you know, you're just uh, opening that throttle bl blade a little bit more. So you want to get that to the point to where hot idle is about 0 to 5 where it just kind of jumps around in that area. So you want to do that though, because everything's kind of sort of based on that. So if you mess with that later, you're going to, you're going to call it, you're going to kind of undo some of the work you did. So when I was starting the car, you could probably hear the, la the starter laboring a little bit and kind of clunking and making some terrible sound. And I'm a little embarrassed to admit that this ground cable was not here when that was happening. Um, I had the front end of the car way totally apart a year or two ago. I've got a big ground that goes all the way to the back of the car uh, somewhere in here. I can't. It's in there, I promise. It attaches to the head, but I, I think it need, needed this ground up here. As soon as I put that on, it's spun over a lot faster and um, seemed to make a big improvement. So I think that's most of that. I also because this starter's off this uh, black car over here. I stole it because I broke my starter. Um, so if I, I had to buy a new one anyway, so I went ahead and, and ordered a Power Master uh, Ultra Torque or something. So it, that, that'll probably absolutely resolve any issues that I have. The other thing I'm going to do is... I'm gonna, this is my fan controller. It's an old DC controller. I guess they still exist, but. Um, so right now, I, well, I don't have the jumper, but I've had a jumper on these pins, which basically just runs the fan full out all the time as soon as the key comes on because I lost or tore up my little temperature probe that goes in there. So um, I'm gonna just put the jumper back on and when I'm done. But I'm going to control all that with the Holly, so I'll do another video on setting that up. But um, basically, the only thing that I'll be controlling is this trigger wire. I'll be controlling that from the Holly, so it will turn on and on. It's just like a basically a relay trigger wire. So, so that's what I'm going to do. But for right now, the fan is disabled, so that takes a lot of load off the starter too. So between those two things, significantly better cranking. So now we can get into the actual messing with the fuel. All right, so to get this thing to start better, we're gonna, just going to focus on a handful of things. Um, first thing is you go to the, your fuel ICF startup enrichment. So that's one thing we're going to mess with, this stuff right here. This is the old, old tune, and it's way, way wrong. I'll just say that. So that's your cranking fuel. That's one thing we're going to mess with. We're going to mess with this IAC parked position. And I don't even know what's up with this. Um, yeah, so that's what it was. Um, the other thing we're going to mess with a little bit is this fuel pump prime percent. So we'll be fiddling with that a little real quick on the system. 
Um, if you go to ignition parameters, you'll see that our cranking timing is 10 and our 400 RPM to run, crank to run. So what I did first, after doing some reading, found that there's not a lot of downside to just cranking this up way up or up to like a hundred. And I don't know that this is actually my, was actually causing me any trouble, but it's one by cranking this up way up or up to a hundred, you can just kind of eliminate this as a factor and not be worried that you're needing more air. If you put this at a hundred, there's not much downside to it. And it's one less factor you got to deal with. You can dial this in later. So first thing I did was crank this up all the way across the board up here to a hundred. Another thing that I read, I did a lot of reading, by the way, to, to be able to figure this out. Uh, something else that I found, that they said where your car idles is very likely uh, where its warm cranking fuel needs to be, in that ballpark, really close. So you can see I had, you know, this thing runs about 185, 180, somewhere. So I had like 24 pounds of cranking fuel. Um, if we go over the to the base fuel, I can't tell you exactly where it, it idles, but it's it's in this zone right in here. You can see that. And you can see that's somewhere in the eight to eight to, and I'm not saying this is exactly, but it, you know, it's somewhere in the eight to ten or eleven range. So um that was a pretty big tip off that my uh cranking fuel was way out of whack. So basically what you do, you get the car warmed up, up to, you know, its normal operating temperature. And then what I did was put this about, it, I started, I don't remember where I started. I ended up somewhere right around nine pounds. So move this to, at 180, 185, nine pounds. From there, you can assume probably that going on up, you're not, it's, it's going to be somewhere in that same ballpark. So once you've got your upper range, even if you get warmer up in this range, it's probably going to be about the same, but you can start working your way back. So the way I did it, uh, once I decided where I was happy with on the warm fuel, um, I would just let the car cool down, you know, 20 degrees. And, and I would, I kind of tried to just mimic what I saw other fuel patterns doing, um, as far as ratio, you know, so if I saw that another one went up by, you know, a certain ratio, I would just do that. And I basically worked my way back to about 60, 60 degrees. And uh, so anyway, you can see this. I'll open the other, the, the new one. So when it's all said and done, you can see we're about nine pounds here in the kind of warmish range. And it works its way up. Um, I've started it all the way back to probably about 50 and it seems fine. So um, just for comparison, so there's the new one. Uh, here's the old one. So, so I did come back and trim up my uh, IAC parked position values. I'm not saying these are 100% where they should be, but they're closer than they were and uh, brought down some. So, so the fuel... The fuel pump prime was the other place that uh, I said we'd kind of work. And you can see we ended up with 100. This is the new tune. Uh, the old tune was 200. Why? I don't know. It just was. So this is working for me. Not that it will work for anyone else. And I am by no means a tuning expert, but significantly better startup than what I had before. All right. So the proof is in the pudding. Wanted to do a cold start, but... Um, I ran it earlier today, so it's a little bit warmer than cold, but you'll get the idea when you hear it start, and you'll notice the difference. Uh, cold start I did this morning, and it was as good as this, So, uh, and that was about 45 or 50 degrees. So I'll spin this around so you can see the, the Holly um, touchscreen and kind of watch what goes on. All right, so I'm just going to crank... No throttle, no anything, and we're going to see how long it takes for it to start at 100 degrees.
just going to start it right back up and see what happens. See if it goes good again. Good enough for me for now. So overall, I am pretty stoked and much happier with uh, the way this thing starts. Um, I didn't mention that I changed my target air fuel in the idle areas for to like 13.5 versus maybe 14 or 14.5. That came at the recommendation of, uh, I think it's Danny Cabral. I don't, I'm not sure how you say his name, but uh, he knows a lot about these things and replies to every forum that I've ever seen. So uh, I tried it and it seems to like it. So I do appreciate you watching and I would very much appreciate any more recommendations on how to get this dialed in even better. So if, uh, if you're an expert or you've just done this more than I have and you know what I need to do, let me know. So thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if this is useful. Appreciate it. See ya.